What we have here is a free response question that you might see on an AP microeconomics type exam that deals with game theory. And it tells us, bread basket and quick lunch are the only two sandwich shops serving a small town. So we're in an oligopoly situation where we only have a few firms. Each shop can choose to set a high price or a low price for sandwiches. The payoff matrix below shows the daily profits for each combination of prices that the two shops could choose. The first entry shows bread baskets profits and the second entry shows quick lunches profits. Assuming that both shops know the information shown in the matrix, answer the following. So just to make sure I understand what's going on here, this is saying that for example, if bread, bread basket can either choose to charge high prices or low prices, quick lunch can either choose to charge high prices or low prices. If, they, if bread basket chooses high prices and quick lunch also chooses high prices, then what this tells us is the first one is bread basket's profit per day would be $105, while quick lunch's profit per day would be $110. And then this is a situation where bread basket is low and quick lunch is high price. And then bread basket would make 120 and quick lunch would make 80. And then when quick lunch has low prices, we can see what are the profit of either when bread basket charges high prices or bread basket charges low. So with that out of the way, let's try to answer these questions. Does each shop have a dominant strategy to set a high price? a dominant strategy to set a low price, or does it have no dominant strategy? So pause the video and try to figure that out. And just as a bit of a, a hint or a reminder, a dominant strategy is a strategy of regardless of what the other player does, you would still bet, be better off to make that choice. So a dominant strategy of setting a high price would be regardless of whether the other player decides to set a high or low price, a high price would always make sense for you. So pause the video and try to see if you can answer that. All right, now let's see what bread basket's situation is here. So if we think bread basket, of course, can either choose to go high or low. Now, if quick lunch goes high, what should bread basket do? Well, then we are in this column over here and these two numbers are for bread basket. And so if quick lunch goes high, then bread basket could go high and charge 105 or it could go low and charge 120. So if quick lunch goes high, bread basket should go low. So let me write this, quick lunch, quick lunch, if it chooses to go high, then bread basket should go low. Now what happens if quick lunch chooses to go low? Well, if quick lunch chooses to go low, the two options for bread basket are either $40 of profit per day if they have a high price, because a lot of their business would go to quick lunch in that situation, or they could go low price and make $75 per day. So even if quick lunch goes low, it still makes sense for bread basket to go low. So bread basket goes low. So we see that bread basket, no matter what quick lunch does, it makes sense for bread basket to go low. So bread basket has a dominant strategy to set a low price. So the dominant, dominant strategy to set, let me write that a little bit clearer, set low price. All right, now quick lunch. So we could do the same type of analysis based on what bread basket might choose to do. So if we see, okay, if bread basket goes high, what should quick lunch do? Well, let's see, if then quick lunch should, so if bread basket goes high, quick lunch, should it go high or low? So it would have an option of $110 or it would have an option of $130. So if bread basket goes high, Quick lunch is better off going low. So let me write that down. Quick lunch should go low. And if bread basket goes low, what should quick lunch do? So if bread basket goes low, quick lunch can either make 80 if it goes high or 70 if it goes low. So in this situation, if bread basket goes low, it makes sense actually for quick lunch to go high and make the 80. So quick lunch would go high. So quick lunch has no dominant strategy. It doesn't make sense for them to always go low or always go high regardless of what bread basket is doing. Depending on bread basket, it might make sense for them to go low if bread basket goes high or high if bread basket goes low. So no dominant, dominant strategy. 
If the two shops do not cooperate on, on setting prices, what will be the profit for each shop? Well, actually, just pause the video. See if you can answer that before we work through it. Well, we already know that Breadbasket has a dominant strategy to set a low price. So Breadbasket is going to go low regardless. So that we're going to end up in this row right over here. And if we are in that situation where Breadbasket goes low regardless, we know that it makes sense for Quick Lunch to go high because they can either make 80 or 70. Well, they're going to go high, and so we're going to end up in this column right over here. So if the two shops do not cooperate on setting prices, the profit of each shop would be Breadbasket would be making $120 a day, and Quick Lunch would be making $80 a day. And this is a Nash equilibrium. Because on its own, no firm can change its decision to optimize its prices more. Because if you are in this, if you are in this cell right over here, Quick Lunch can't change Breadbasket's decision. So Quick Lunch could say, I'm either going to make 80 or I'm going to make 70. So it wouldn't make any sense for them to switch away. And then Breadbasket, they can't make the decision for Quick Lunch. They can say, hey, we're either going to make 120 or we're going to make 105. And so since we can't change what Quick Lunch is doing, well, of course, we're going to choose to make 120. So people will stay in this bottom left cell. We're in Nash equilibrium. All right, so the next part, they ask us, or they tell us, the town government is concerned that food prices are too high. It decides to give a daily subsidy of $20 to any shop that chooses to set a low price for its food items. Redraw the payoff matrix under the government subsidy system. So like always, pause this video and go through that exercise. It'll be interesting. All right, now let's do this together. So we have bread basket. I'll try to write bread. Actually, let me draw my little matrix first. So it's a two by two. So almost done with my matrix. And one more. All right, that wasn't near the middle. There you go, right around there. I still, maybe there. And then we have that there. And then we have high, low, high, low. And then you have quick lunch. If I were actually doing this in the test, maybe I'd write this a little bit lower so it's a little bit neater. And then this is bread basket. And let's see, the the it's giving a daily subsidy of $20. So we could just do that. That adds to the profit of a firm that is selling at low prices. So if they're both at high prices, that's not they're not going to be able to get that subsidy from the government. So we're still going to be at 105 and 110 for breadbasket and quick lunch respectively. Now, if breadbasket stays high in this situation, well then they're still only going to make $40. But in this situation right over here, quick lunch is going to get a $20 subsidy because they are choosing to go low. So they're going to make 130 plus 20. So I'll write that in a different color. So I would put that in and I'll I'll put this in red. So 130 plus 20, they're going to make $150 because they're choosing to go low price here. That's what, what qualifies you for the subsidy. And in this situation, if bread basket goes low price, they're going to make 120, what they would have made in that situation, plus 20. So this is going to be 140. But this is a situation where Quick Lunch is charging a high price. So they're not going to get the subsidy, so they're still going to make $80. And then this cell is both of them charging a low price, so they're both going to get $20 more than what you see right over here. So bread basket would make $95, $95, and quick lunch is going to make $90 in this situation. And let's see, they ask us some more questions. They say, using your redrawn payoff matrix, answer each of the following. Would quick lunch choose to set a high price or a low price? Explain using specific values from your redrawn matrix. So pause the video and see if you can answer that. All right, so we're going to look at quick lunch now. And we could do the same type of analysis to see if they have a dominant strategy. We could say, okay, if bread basket goes high, goes high, what is quick lunch going to do? So if bread basket goes high, now in this situation, Quick Lunch will either go high and make $110, or it could go low and, and make $150. So Quick Lunch is going to go low in this situation. And if Bread Basket goes low, 
Quick Lunch can make $80 if it goes high or can make $90 if it goes low. So once again, Quick Lunch is going to go low. So Quick Lunch, Quick Lunch now has dominant dominant strategy for low price for low price and i could try to explain this out if if breadbasket goes high i'll write it out here normally you have a, a little book to write this in but if bread i'll abbreviate breadbasket goes high quick lunch would is rational to make $150 instead of 110 would want to make $150 versus 110 by going low if if breadbasket goes low goes low quick lunch makes $90 versus versus $80 by going low all right would the profits for breadbasket increase decrease or stay the same explain with a comparison to your answer in part b1 use specific values so before subsidy before I actually pause this video and, and try to do this as well <laughs> before subsidy oh now we'll do it together before subsidy quick lunch or i should say bread basket bread basket was making and we have it up here So if the two shops do not cooperate on setting prices what will be the profit of each shop we saw bread basket would make $120 cuz that was that Nash equilibrium state after subsidy after subsidy So let's look at it we still have bread basket still has a dominant strategy to go low because if quick lunch goes high Bread basket is would want to make the 140 instead of 105 and if quick lunch goes low bread basket would want to make 95 instead of 40 but now they both have a dominant strategy for going low so we're going to end up in this bottom right with this bottom right cell after subsidy both have dominant dominant strategy to go low resulting in $95 profit for bread basket and so $95 is less than $120 so bread basket's profit goes or I should say decreases decreases And we are done.